RX 6600 XT, launched on July of 2021, built on the 7 nanometer process, with a boost clock up to 2589 MHz, paired with 8 GB of GDDR6 memory running at 2000 MHz. With its max power draw of 160 watts, it was designed for entry-level 1440p gaming, but it was excellent at 1080p high refresh rate, high settings. But with its launch price of $379, it was very underwhelming compared to its NVIDIA counterpart, the RTX 3060, or its last-gen predecessor, the RX 5700 XT. But your boy got this for a steal at 130, so we're gonna kneecap it and plug it into a Steam Deck. Let's get to the benchmarks. When compared to onboard graphics at 1080p low medium mixture, the RX 6600 XT doubles performance on Cyberpunk, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, Assassin's Creed's Odysseys, and in the benchmarks Heavenly and MSI Combustor more than triple, but keep in mind Heavenly and MSI Combustor are GPU bound benchmarks. When we compare the 6600 XT to its little brother, the 6500 XT, and its grandfather, the RX 580, in the titles of Cyberpunk, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, they're all pretty much neck and neck, with the 6600 XT taking a slight lead in Cyberpunk and Tiny Tina, but in Assassin's Creed are dead even with the, its little brother, the 6500 XT. But when we look at the benchmarks Heavenly and MSI Combustor, we can really see the generational gap between the RX 580 and the 6600 XT, scoring an additional 65 frames from its grandfather, the 580, uh, and an MSI Combustor literally more than doubling it. And the huge gap is 100% because of the limitations of the Steam Deck. The Steam Deck is heavily bottlenecked by its CPU, Meaning, regardless of how much horsepower your GPU has when you tie it to a Steam Deck, regardless if it's a 6600 XT, a 7900 XT, a RX 580 will trade blows with it because the one thing that's slowing all of them down is the Steam Deck CPU. And those are the benchmarks for the 6500 XT when you tie it into a Steam Deck and it's extremely underwhelming if you ask me. But I already knew that that was going to happen. I've been testing cards on the Steam Deck for a while now, including 6700 XT. And it's all pretty much the same because the CPU, regardless if it's a 6600 XT or RX 580 CPU is going to be the bottleneck. Um, but with that said, should you still attempt this mod? And my honest opinion is yes, because it's really inexpensive if you shop correctly. You double your performance and you uh, give your, your device a lot more life, meaning it will be on your desk. You will use it a lot more. It will be more, uh, it, will, it won't go into the, the drawer and never see the light of day ever again. You will be able to use it like continuously if you're okay with 1080p gaming, which I am. I am. I'm 100% okay with 1080p gaming as long as the screen's not bigger than 24 inches. Once you get to past 24 inches, you have to go to 1440p. Anything above 32 uh, inches, you got to go to 4K. And that's just me. That's my preference. Um, everyone has different preference. I still remember the days when we had 720p big screen TV. So yeah, I'm not going back, by the way. I'm, we're we're, we're going to shrink screen, go 1080p. But with that said, let's, let's talk about um, if you're going to do this mod, what is the best graphics cards price to performance wise for you? So I got the chart up here. I'll just scooch over to the right. And our pricing is going to be a little bit different um, for this one. Our, um, I'm going to go ahead and list the RX 6600 XT for a price that I've been able to continuously find on the interwebs and on Facebook Marketplace at $160. I feel like that's the that's a really doable range. Um, you might pay a little bit more, you may pay a little bit less, but 160 is a really doable range. And we look at the chart on that, um, the RX 580 per frame 
beats out both cards. Uh, that 6600 XT is almost just ridiculously like, why even bother uh, for both Cyberpunk, Tiny Tina, and Assassin's Creed. And the MSI Combustor, you definitely do see 6600 XT is the best price per frame. Um, but that's at that base price of $160. So if I were to just look at this chart, obviously I would 100% tell you to get the RX 580. It just makes the most sense. Um, but if you get your 6600 XT for what I got it for, which is a total of $130 minus uh, shipping and taxes, that's what I got the card for, you can clearly see the 6600 XT beats them all out the gate, blows them all out the water, except for in Assassin's Creed. Um, and remember, Assassin's Creed's a heavy CPU bottleneck. Um, so, but in every other title, definitely the 6600 XT at $130 is a good buy. But the problem is, can you get it for $130? That's the real problem. With all that said, it's hard for me to not recommend the RX 580. So let's just talk about my current build, um, the dream build. If you can get everything um, at the prices I got, you can get an external graphics card plugged into your Steam Deck for less than $130, about $125 if you're able to source the items like I did on um, secondhand sites like Macari, um, Facebook Marketplace and stuff like that. I paid $70 for my GPU. I paid um, $35 for my Oculent cable from Amazon. And I got my power supply, which is a Thermaltake 500 watt power supply. It's one of the cheaper ones, the SmartThink one, um, for, uh, for $20 on Facebook Marketplace. So altogether, I spent $100, $125 for the whole thing, for the whole thing. And I doubled the performance out of my Steam Deck. So when you're looking at it like that, you just put $105 into there's there, there's accessories for the Steam Deck that are more than $105. Um, but this accessory will actually double your performance in your Steam Deck. Actually, that's a good title for another video. If you're able to do it like that, man, it's it's really nice. But with all that said, yeah, I think that's the perfect build. I want to bring up one big caveat: um, power draw. So the RX 580 is a way hungrier than the 6600 XT. It is four times hungrier than the 6600 XT. The RX 580 will pull, I've seen it pull about 160 watts at max load. So it is power hungry where this bad boy about 40, 45 watts, I think I maybe saw 50 watts at one point when I was playing Power World. Um, definitely way it sips some power compared to this card and the 6500 xt was double this one so if power draw is an issue for you maybe you're doing a all in one like um mobile gaming platform definitely this is something that you want to be leaning towards or you know if you're one of those people that live in a place like california where their electricity is super high this in the long this in the long run will probably save you more money than having buying one of these um let's say you use this for two years i don't do the math but the if you're using four times the amount of electricity to power this card than this card you might make up the savings that you'd made on this card by just buying this card because it just sips so little power in comparison um and it gives off less heat it's not as noisy and it does get more frames um about 10 more frames so also keep that in mind other than that guys thank you so much for watching um if you have any questions comments concerns or maybe you want me to test out a particular game in in with one of these cards or with all of the cards please let me know leave them in the comments below um this was a pretty fun series i really enjoy um testing graphics cards i think i like testing graphics cards more than i like playing on the graphics cards oddly enough <laughs> but other than that guys thank you so much for watching i'll catch you on the next one